is our LOI that's outstanding. Okay. Well, in general terms, a letter of intent expiration date is meaningless. We send the LOI after having a meaningful discussion. We don't have any surprises in there because we'll expect those to be ignored. Uh, little things aren't a big deal. We also don't say in the LOI, hey, we're not going to give you a lease deposit. We don't mention anything that hasn't been discussed because there's tiers to this. You know, Once they sign off on the letter of intent, we get to a lease. A lease usually includes the lease deposit and first and last month's rent and crazy stuff. But at that point, again, they're invested. It's right. psychological. They put their time into it. They've put the paperwork in, and now they're ready to sign the thing. So it's usually like, ah, all right, fine. You don't give deposit money, great. But now we're in the infancy of this. So if it's time to put this on the document, in your opinion, to call back and say, hey, what happened? I don't do that. We submitted it. We gave them 15 bucks. It's expired. So where is she? Why aren't they reaching back out? It shows real weakness if you call and say, hey, the LOI expired. And they'll say, oh, yeah, I know. We, we, we thought you were kidding with all that stuff you asked for. Well, we weren't. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. So the advice is to hold off. Yeah, I mean, we're, you send a note across class, hey, will you go to prom with me? You watch her open it and then fold it up and put it in her desk. Well, she's got it. That's the intention, go to prom. Do you send another note on day two and say, hey, did you get my first note? Her answer's probably no. Okay, all right. Now, as prom, will... gets, prom gets closer, you know, you hear things. She doesn't have a date yet. We, we can pick up the pieces and maybe revisit that note. But right now, they know what our intentions are and they're saying, mm, it's not important to them. You're gonna be operating from a position of weakness if you follow up with a letter of intent. You could get after okay. them every single day and in my experience, it, it doesn't bode well for you. Okay, all right. Keep an eye on it as always. Close look at the store. See if you see any changes happening, but beyond that. Okay. Well done. So number two here is straight out of the online for lease ad, former laundromat. Oh no, an econo wash. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it, this, it is has the, the, this is one of the, the, old the, the, cha the chains though. This is, this is one of the stores that they built. They're still doing this. There's different, you know, there's different entities, but they're still trying to do these businesses. I just answered a, a comment on another thread on YouTube on someone else's channel. Should I do, should I go in and pay for one of these franchise laundries? Well, God, why? When did they do a kind of wash? This looks like in the 50s to me. Well, they, they've been doing it since then, ever since laundries were new. Econo wash. Now, whenever you see all these stores branded alike, that's what it was once, but now it's just the sign that remains. So you were yeah. saying? Um, they, they've boarded up this space, but I was able to get a couple shots from the internet and then... Um, I, I was able to take some pictures in between the boards. It's pretty rough inside. They've they've ripped out everything as far as the equipment. Yeah. But it, it appears as if the infrastructure is there. I see piping. I see you know sewage. I see um, you know uh, electrical. Yeah, uh, it's just it's they, they left the place a mess. That's that's really good. I can tell you're standing on top of a chair on your tippy toes and. Yeah, you're able yeah to exactly. Get, get the good shots. So excellent. Nicely done. Thank you. Yeah, this, this looks to me like someone's using kid gloves and they're trying to get the equipment out but not mess up the infrastructure. So we shall see. You've also got information on the rent. So they're, they're saying we want to rent this place and this is the rate. So it comes out to $2 a square foot a month. Yep. 25 a year. 
Do they mention the term laundry? Do they say, hey, this is a laundromat? Yes. They, they actually say closed laundromat or, for, I'm sorry, former laundromat in the space. So they're likely trying to pump up their lease rate because they think they've got some gold here in the wall. So we'll try to knock that down. Without further ado, let's see what we can do. Here we go. All right. Brett? Yes? Hey, Brett, my name is Danny. I'm looking at some commercial space here in L.A. for lease. This is, uh, there's a former laundromat here. That's what I'm calling on. Yeah, Danny, I think we've talked about 10 years ago. I have been in laundries for a very long time in three states at this point now, my friend. I, I don't have your cell phone, are you, but are, are, are you in Arizona? No, we're we're No, no. It's, it's, yeah, I this is familiar. this is my cell phone. I have no, I have yeah, stores in up. I have stores in Los Angeles. I have stores in in Arizona. Yes, I've got a little ranch out there. So, uh I see that you it looks to me we looked through the glass and we were able to peek and find that it looks like you're keeping the infrastructure here and if I'm right uh, you're you're being careful not to destroy that in case someone wants to put a laundry back in, and we're interested. You're talking about the Econo Wash on La Tijera? The former Econo Wash, yes, sir. All right. So I do have a tenant who's not a coin laundry, and the landlord is okay if they wanted to uh, you know, basically forego the coin laundry use. That means you know, getting rid of whatever piping we have left, and, and, and so be it. I still think that a coin laundry is the, is the best use for that space because it's the back of the shopping center and it has all that parking. Well, if I'm following you, what you're saying is that the landlord is communicating with another possible tenant that has nothing to do with us or a laundromat. Yeah, well, no, it's through me, but it's not a laundromat. But they were okay with leasing it to them because obviously it gives them it gives them a tenant that's going to be hopefully a long-term tenant. Okay. Well, so I, 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 called, they're, they're I called I called the. I called to talk about us leasing the space, spending probably half a million dollars on not only washers, dryers, but revamping, retooling, because that's my thing. But if you're telling me you're already moving with someone else, that's great. No, no, I, I'm telling you where we're at. Okay. So le leases aren't even prepared. Okay. Uh, well, likely, and I, and I, I, say, I, I don't know I who that other tenant is or who that other potential ten tenant is, but... Likely they're going to pay more than we can, and you said long term. Uh, normally laundromats are about as long as it as long as it gets, uh, because obviously we're spending well, a lot of money. Oh well, I, 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 no, the, the, the rent is right on. I don't think that's going to be an issue for for any anybody, because uh, we're looking at about four thousand a month. Sure, and the difference is it's been a long time, like you said, ten a decade since we talked. Um, we normally can't pay market rate because we do half our business on Sunday. I don't mean to school you on coin laundries. Your previous operator left because they never retooled. They never spent the money. They just took and took and took. And now, you know, th this, this, they are where they are, which is gone. They've failed. And my intrigue is always in the gas, water, electric. There's no environmental impact fees to be paid, you know, cards on the table. I'm excited, but not thrilled. I'm interested, not enthralled. Um, okay. That's fair, but I, I the, the the number is definitely going to be at where where I'm talking about, um, and so, on, on the free free rent side of things, you know, my my landlord is, you know, look, I'm gonna tell you, I mean, being, being frank, this the space is a shithole. 
they, they left it in a complete shithole. It, uh, you know, they, I, I, even, even the, uh, the, the piping that's left, as you can imagine, it's you know, cast iron piping, and uh, I don't even know what's underneath the ground. But, you know, whoever, whoever is going in there, you know, my landlord is hands off, so whoever takes the space is going to be the one to remove or replace the, the plumbing. And, uh, obviously, re-equip it. If it's, if it's a point laundry, they're going to re-equip it. And, uh, well, you started to you started to go on a you started to go on a tangent, Brent, about abatement. So, is there none? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that my landlord is fairly firm at five months free rent. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, put all the cards on the. Sure. No, I appreciate that. Have you tried to buy a truck or uh, or a car or renew your washer, dryer, refrigerator lately? At your house? That's why it's only four thousand. <laughs> That's why it's only four K. Okay. So it's it's uh, eighteen hundred and fifty square feet. You're looking for two bucks a square foot, thirty eight eighty five. You're telling me everything is firm and absolute. You know what I could? Uh, what I'm going to do is put a bug in your ear. Who's who's the other potential lease? I don't mean who. I don't mean it, what. It, just. It's not, it's, yeah, it's in the uh, it's in the beauty world. Okay. Okay. The uh, oh, I, I had a thought and I lost it. Sorry. I've been there. So I don't know anything about beauty shops. I don't know about salons. I don't know about nails. I, I don't know. I've I've been there, but I send my wife there. However, uh, I I can't disparage or put that asunder. What I can say is that with my group, what you have is someone that's going to go in there and retool the store immediately. We're not dipping our toe in the water. We know precisely what we are doing. If the landlord is a smaller landlord and he thinks likely, hey, I, I don't know if laundromats are even viable any longer. They are. Is it still a good business? Absolutely. What you have to do, since it's been a decade since we talked, we put Alexa systems in our stores. Why not? I've got it at home. It's not about locking the doors automatically. It's about having really good security in the store. And eventually, when it's ripe for it, they're 24 hours. That's the way it has to work. We become the police of these centers in most cases. Because one customer in my laundry that's well lit with brand new equipment, they're going to become the police of the center. You know, a citizen. They're, they're not vigilantes. It's not Batman. But they end up becoming the eyes and ears of the center. So we've got five or six people in there at night. It works out well. We're going to elevate that. And how do we do it? Spending money. Spending money on my business. You know, like I said, it's a good half a million dollars up front. Don't know nail salons. Don't know restaurants. Don't know what they do. Uh, I'll put an LOI together for you. I don't want it to be ignored, but we'll be very realistic on what we can do. What I was getting at with a washer, dryer, a set for home, or a, a refrigerator, or a new truck, you watch the news, you fill your gas tank, at the end of the day, the supply chain is broken. So these parts, even though the equipment, we're going to go to Hips and Speed Queen and Wascomat, American Dryer, Dexter, all the companies that you've never heard of, and we're going to try to get the best deal. There will be a glut in the market eventually, but right now, it's very, very hard to get the equipment. It needs to be paid for, built, and delivered. So here we are in a position, I don't blame you, for vanillaing the space, hoping to get a nail salon or a hairdresser in there. I don't blame you. And if you're saying this is the rent, great. All I can say is it can't be steadfast lease rate for a laundromat. And I know that. If you were searching and grappling for information on coin laundries, you know, you might come to me and say, hey, what, what makes sense? What can a laundry do? And the reality is we're not trying to squeeze you. We don't want to end up not only running out of money, but making this entire center up on blocks on four wheels without having a good laundry there. It's a great business, phenomenal business. When the rent is commensurate, you know, and we're able yeah. to retool in a timely manner. I'm still building stores. Absolutely. 
but I know it's going to take time to get that equipment in. I don't have it in a warehouse waiting. Right. So my, my I, I look forward to an LOI. Uh, just and one thing to keep in mind, which is a very nice thing, that may, on your end, be a positive thing. That it, it's a modified gross lease. Okay. Good. So no, no trouble. There. Good. We can survive at this, but you know what we want to do is thrive and pay that lease rate on time and end up with another jewel in our crown, not a feather in the cap. You know, feathers blow away. Uh, is this your cell phone I'm reaching you on? No, it's, 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 it's the work line, but it does go over to my cell. Okay. I think I have your cell in my phone. Uh, what's your cell phone number? 818. And I'll make sure to email you. I'll CC my partner, Josh. Okay. You're going to, I'm not looking to throw our hat in the ring and end up pitting us against any other potential tenant, especially a laundromat. But as promised a decade ago, we keep our fingers on the pulse of these stores. And when one closes down, we're on top of it. And that's us. That's our team. I'll CC him in the email. Give us, give us, a day to put an LOI together, and it's a, it's a real offer. Thanks for the time. Okay. So, no, my pleasure. Thanks, Cheers. Andy. Nice talking to you again. Bye-bye. He seemed a little, uh, a little out of it. <laughs> yeah, maybe he was distracted, but uh, he remembered you from 10 years ago. That's, that's great. Right? <laughs> I'm a memorable guy. <laughs> it's true. That is true. Um, I, I also liked how uh, he started off saying, uh, basically, there's somebody else that's interested in the space, but then he's selling us on it. You know, it's a modified gross lease, no triple net. Um, I so, thought it was really odd that the first thing he did before we even got it, he didn't, I didn't say that I'm looking at your marketplace where where'd you find this uh these numbers online i didn't say i was looking at it i didn't say i knew what it was and then first thing he said it's the old sales tactic well we've got someone else interested Uh, okay i didn't ask right right the landlord (laughs) is, is talking to somebody else about but then is that what this space shows us or does he think we weren't able to look inside i told him we could see that the infrastructure was there your environmental yeah, impact he, fees alone here in Los Angeles are hundred grand more. I, yeah, I think it's eight eight grand a a, a hookup, something like that. Eight thousand dollars times forty. Yeah, yeah. That's eighty million dollars. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a banker like you. <laughs> that's going to be the YouTube. I'm not a banker either. That's the YouTube <laughs> thumbnail. Eighty million dollar laundromat. Listen, um, you got his email address. You yep. wrote you wrote it down. Yep. So, put together the LOI, and we're, we're going to shave this. I don't believe it, it's all a game, and I don't really believe that they're going to be scooping up this rate of rent from a hair salon or a nail salon or whatever salon it is. I just don't believe that. Yet what we physically see is they are being very gentle with the gas, water, and electric. It's all here. So you have a massive leg up. Okay. Okay. Uh, What should we write the LOI for as far as rate of rent? He's asking $24 a square foot. I think 20 is fair. 20. Okay. And moreover, Uh, you know, this is going to end up becoming a very, very profitable laundromat at that. 
And I'm, I'm getting, you know, I have to think about the queries that I get from, well, why is it different in LA versus New York versus, it's not, it's really not. But this market will bear that rent and this rent that he's asking is very, very low. Nice. So that would be buck sixty-six. And what is what is uh, meant by modified gross lease? Is that just gross lease with? It a means cam, that they're or? that all their triple nets. There's no cams, and it means that their triple nets are going to be set. They're 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 telling you, eh, this is what it's always been. You know, you've got a lazy landlord that doesn't really want to do the work and try to figure out how taxes are all laid out. So they, they basically do charge add-ons, but they set, they fix it. Nice. It nice. is nice. There's no unforeseen okay. circumstances that are to come. Now, that said, uh, I explained to him that five months, they're already offering you five months. And a lot of people that watch this, they think, what are you talking about? What's abatement? Well, free rent? I didn't know I could even get free rent. Well, he does, and he knows we're aware of it. But it should be 18 months right now. So what you're going to put, tell him, tell him you put five months after opening. Five actually, months after opening. Actually, say, uh, say 60 days post-opening. Put that in the LOI. Because okay. you're, you're golden if you've got two months to bring the people in once the doors open, no matter how. And someone asked me the other day, why are you changing that up? Because times are changing. Yeah. 12 yeah. months free rent is great, but it's not about the time. It has nothing to do with father time. It has to do with profit. So if you're in this environment in Los Angeles, if you're able to get six months to get the place open and then another two on top of that, good. They'll have to look at it and say, well, what are they trying to say? It will trigger a response where they'll come back to us and say, well, what the hell does this mean? We were offering you five. Okay, give us eight. We still won't be able to get the doors open. And truly, sure. depending, I had a distributor tell me the other day, well, no, I'm sorry. I talked to a landlord and the landlord said, I called a distributor and the distributor said, I guarantee you I can get this store retooled for you in 60 days. Well, I said, was that new equipment? The landlord was trying to hustle me, but I believe him. Uh -huh. And he said, I said, was that, hold on. My knowledge, this distributor is selling you used equipment. He said, maybe, I don't know. There you have uh -huh. it. Yep, yep. They yank then, something out of a store and they put it in the warehouse and they're trying to offload it, right. right? And the next thing I said is, or, or they've got a container ship coming with equipment They've got equipment waiting and ready and on the trucks. And they're going to screw the other guy and give it to you. Because you're rubbish. And that other guy might have three or four stores. He might be wishy-washy. He might, might not. He might be retooling, not tooling. He was astounded because how would you know that? Well, because those are the options. If this guy guarantees he can have equipment in two months right now, it's because he's already got it. And why would he already yeah. have it? Because he ordered it and someone fell apart, fell through, or he's going to screw that guy and say, well, I'll just give it to this guy. Should I massage the 60-day post-opening? and No, and because you're not, you, 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 want them to, you want them to come back. Uh, what I'm telling you is 60 days post-opening is brilliant. You're saying, bro, you're going to do whatever it takes to get the doors open, and then you're going to have two months to do your hoopla and give balloons to the kids. That's perfect. Don't ask for five, okay. I mean, five months after or 90 days. 60 is perfect. Okay. And perfect. you know how this is. Oh. A letter of intent. If I was BSing you, I'd say, congratulations, have a nice day. This is your laundry. It's not. We don't know. Right. Right. Uh, one step closer. Correct. All right. Looks good. I like it. Goodbye. You got one more. I know. I was seeing if you're paying attention. <laughs> this was interesting. What is this King of Laundry before Danny? What the heck is that supposed to mean? I'm upset. <laughs> so this, the landlord used to be landlord slash operator. This guy, uh, Victor, um, he owned 20 laundromats. 
in his day. Okay. So um, what I've been able to gather is that he purchased the properties and since his death, he has um, put those properties or, or they have been put into a family trust. Wait a minute. Somebody now, died. So the guy that had 20 uh, stores died. He died, right? So he's gone. He's no longer with us. But in the 60s through the 90s, this guy had over 20 stores. I miss him already. And ne- yeah, me too. The, the family still owns the property. And I believe they've been acting as the landlord only. And the operator has been separate. This particular one, the doors are closed. The, it's almost 3,000 square feet. I don't know why they closed the doors, but the equipment is on biz buy sell as an asset sale. Ooh. Okay. So they're trying to get rid of the equipment. And in that ad, it does, does not specify anything about a lease. It says NA on the lease term. but I think they've only been in operation for about five years. I don't know if they were dumb enough to just sign a five-year lease, but um, I I tracked down the daughter of Victor, the king of laundry, and she is now the executor to the property. Can we we call him the prince of laundry? Because it's confusing when I keep seeing that written down. (laughs) We can call it the prince of laundry. All right, thank you. (laughs) He, he could be the Duke. I don't care. I'm not saying I need, I need my title and my scepter, but all right. The asset sale is a hundred grand for a bunch, bunch of broke ass laundry equipment. Yep. And but we don't call calling, brokers. No, of course not. We're calling the landlord because the broker is just going to shine us on because they, they think they've got a saleable thing. Now, they, we know, you know this. They might just say, no, 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 no. Done with laundromats. Don't want laundromats. Laundromats are no good. It's a horrible business. We've been through all of it. We dealt with the Prince of Laundry, and he couldn't make it. This looks like a historic building, by the way. Yeah, built in, I think, the 60s. So this is the daughter of her father was the one that had 20 laundromats. Mm. So mm. She, she grew up in the business. She knows what... It, a bearing job is all about, and she probably knows how to spend cash. Yeah, she probably can do a bearing job, is what I'm guessing. I hope so. And what I was interested when I see a building like this, it's interesting because you could probably they no one's done it, but you can go and hit the city up, and if this is a historic district, probably end up with a with a free loan from the government. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? I'll pursue that. Yeah, you, you need to. All right, without further ado, we don't know if anybody's going to answer, but who we have is, who do you want me to call, Robin? Robin, yes. All right, so she's the kid. Correct. And she's probably 50? 60. No spring chicken, Robin. All right, I'm trying to sell. Okay. Cold call. Here we go. This is so exciting. Hello? Robin? Speaking. Hey, Robin. My name is Danny. I am looking at some space here in Los Angeles. McClay, the former laundromat. Oh, it's still a laundromat, but okay. (laughs) And okay. if yes, so that is what I do. And if my research is correct, your family has been in the business in town for a very long time. I'm surprised correct. we don't know each other. I, I probably, we probably know of each other, but my interest currently is we're building out more stores. We're, we're scouting existing, like you said, laundries with infrastructure, you know, the gas, water, electric is there. And we didn't find, right. find this on Buy Biz Sell, Robin. We, we, we didn't find the ad for the equipment, frankly. I've been looking at this store for some time. and Well, cur- so currently we have a lease with okay. um, JME Management, and then they have subleased it. Okay. And I know that they're trying to find the sublease 
person is trying to find someone to take over their part of that. Did you know they've given up and they're now doing an asset sale? No, I did not. Okay. Well, I hate to be the bearer of good slash bad news. Um, okay. At, at the end of the day, and I, I want to talk to you as as a landlord and also what I believe is a laundromat operator for a very long time um, because that's near and dear to my heart. So what I want to do, and it's not selfish, what I want to do is sign a long-term lease with you, with your family, with your trust, and then spend the money on brand new equipment. And frankly, uh, I'm interested in the gas, water, electric, the environmental impact fees have been paid, obviously. This is, is a laundromat, like you said, and it should remain as such. If your tenant is great, if they pay the rent on time, if they're wondrous and wonderful and they've been with you for a very long time, great. Again, I can't put that asunder. I don't want to. But they've closed the doors. Uh, right. The, I know that. There was, there was a flood. Um, they, they weren't maintaining the, the, their, what they were supposed to be maintaining on the roof. I mean, we take care of the actual structure, but they had, um, weren't keeping it clean. And so, it, anyway, it plugged. Yeah. It rained, it overflowed, it all came into the laundry. They shut it down at that back in December and they have not opened the door since. And it's definitely able to be open other than the fact that a lot of the equipment isn't working. But right. that was before that, that even happened. Um, I We're in a lease with, um, as I said, JMB Management. Mm -hmm. The option for this lease comes up February. So by like December of this year, we will know if they want to continue the option or not. To, right. to move on with the lease. So we can't at this time say, okay, you're out because sure, we do have a lease. Sure. And I appreciate so, am, I, am I right? You're, you're, you're fam you, you've got laundry in your blood, just like my kids. Yeah. You my, grew up with this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> my parents um, actually at one point had 21 laundries awesome. that they were operating at one time. So this has been going on since like the early sixties. Um, and we're down to the last, this is, was the very first store. And um, this is the last one we have that we still own awesome. that we haven't sold. And you use so, the laundromats to, to end up on a property ladder. And now you guys are property barons. Good for you. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I love to hear that story because we all have to start somewhere. I own some commercial right. space as well. And my partner and I are, again, not in the infancy of this. I've been doing this for 16 years as well. And it, 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 maybe I'm poking you by saying that they're now selling the equipment for 100K through a broker. So I think they're done. I, yeah, we, we pretty much knew they were on that direction. Um, we just had to bide the time until they, I guess, broke their lease. And now we're waiting to see what happens yeah. with well, um, let me say um, this. I want to I want to communicate directly with you. Are you the Are you the one that negotiates leases, if you will, when it happens? Um, if if well, if it's through, like I said, if 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 JMB Management doesn't um, continue on, then okay. we're going to reevaluate what we want to do. I love um, it. Well, I've got your number, so, so you're you're my gal. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to communicate with you as much as I can, and that's fine. Thank if you. you and but you're not interested in doing the sublease from them, right? No, no. You, you know better. I, so. I, I want to be like I, your dad. I, 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 I've, I've got to have 20 just, stores in LA. Just check it. Um, no, that's let me fine. Talk, and let, me, you wanna... let me talk about that. Um, I, I think that you know this, but I want to reiterate it. I want to, again, go over this. I wouldn't go through a sublease. No, thank you. There's no reason I, for it. I'm from, I, don't play, I don't blame you. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm from Brooklyn originally. And you know, we've got rent control. We've got certain districts where it's not allowed. And, and no landlord wants to lease their space to right. an old lady and then have her really let her cousin move in. And, and it's a whole mess. Right. So we get that, right. especially when we're dealing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be spending probably close to 750 grand on washers, dryers, retool. Right. You Absolutely. know that. You know yep. that. Uh -huh. So my million yep. dollar roll of the dice isn't exactly that. It's more like I've, I've got to have some security. I mean, I'm going to hit you up for abatement. I'm going to look for oh, yeah. lots of help from yeah. you. And, and I want to deal right. with you. This may never happen, Robin, but if it does, it can be great for both of us. Because I can't pay exorbitant rent. It's a laundromat. You know that. Right. When Absolutely. do we do, finish my sentence? We do half of our business on what day? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I know. Sunday. It's, it's Right. Yeah. I know. It's so um what I was gonna say is if you'd like, I, I don't mind at all keeping your information. So okay. as things move along, 
I can keep you informed. I don't have a problem with that. There's somebody else who's done the same thing and they've, they, you know, they've sent me information and they said, just let me know when you're moving to the next level. So, okay. um, so if you're well, more if than it's welcome a bidding to do that, war, I, if it's a bidding war, I'm just hanging up right now. I don't do that. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing a bidding war because I don't know who's going to be interested at the end of the day. Yeah. We're whatever, wherever we go for leasing and all that, we're going to do fair market value, you know, and all that. And then we'll go from there. Robin, my oldest so. daughter is 19. And okay. it is my hope that someday she is as sharp and as intelligent and she wants to further the family business as do you. So I applaud you and your dad oh, you. for what you've done so okay. far. Uh, before well, I start um, crying, so this is your cell phone? This is my cell phone, Okay. Yes. Do me a favor, text me your email address and I'll follow up. My name's Danny D'Angelo, sure. my partner is Josh and uh, I'll okay. CC him. And we'll see what whatever, come what may, and I hate to be the bearer of that good slash bad news, but there's, there's, okay. there's, uh, there's some action afoot here. And nobody's going to give them 100 grand for this old equipment. It's junk. Oh, it is. I, we, we, we totally know that. I mean, we were like, I can't believe, anyway. There's yes, no better landlord than a previous operator because you know <laughs> what a bearing job sounds like. You know when the machine's about to break and go down the street. I like the building. I love the street corner, but I'm not yeah, in love location. with this spot until I start bleeding money and losing ink. All right. Send me your email. Thank you for the time. Absolutely. Robin. Cheers. Okay. Of course. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Lovely. I, I really like that conversation. I'm glad she, you, you paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she she definitely seems um <clears throat> uh understanding um and I, I liked your take on continuing the family business, right? And doing it to a level that her father would be proud of. I think that uh that gives us a little bit of a leg up. Well, dude, I'm not I'm not a magician, you know. There's nothing up my sleeves and I, and and when I get into something like that, it's absolutely true. I, I do feel, and this woman's 10 years my senior, but still, she's someone's daughter, and I'm not trying to play on harp strings here. I'm, I'm saying something that's very real to me, that she's obviously really intelligent, she's, she's straightforward, uh, she was kind and generous, and, and she said, well, oh, they're selling the equipment, which is total junk. Hmm, okay. <laughs> and, I, and I believe right. her when she says she's got someone else that wants to do what we do. Okay. Sure. Uh, sure. This address is brand new to me, so I can promise. Every time a client, and this is a question people have, well, what if? What if I'm in Chattanooga and you've already got somebody there? So what? There's, as we've seen, there's hundreds of stores like this. Hundreds, especially yeah. in LA and New York. And so this is a brand, I, I don't have Robin's number. I didn't until now. It's hard to believe. As long as, <laughs> the, the last call, the guy talked to me 10 years ago, and here's, a gal who's in the family business who's got 20 stores and she doesn't know me and I don't know her. The, vis the business is just too vast for that. Sure, sure. So what we do on this, you know what we do here. We, we communicate. I'll send the canned email. She just sent me her email address. She just sent me the full email and her last name. Perfect. And, and you had it all correct. So really nicely done. Good work on this. People get really excited about closed laundromats. I don't. There's no reason to get yeah. thrilled about a closed store. Most, most, the preponderance of the stores that we take over are operating, meaning operating, they're open, but poorly. Poorly. Right. We didn't even get into lease terms because there's no need for it. She's pissed. She's on a tear right now. I'm pretty sure she's like, hey, getting on the phone with the right people and saying, ah, uh, you're trying to sell the equipment? Boom. Good work. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So if I heard her correctly, she said that come September, they should be um, knowing what direction things are going to go, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, so, the lease is actually done in December, but they expect at least a couple months before that. Yeah, so let's, that. let's set our calendar for October. Okay. But prior to that, okay. remember this, as you've heard me say many times. Keep a close physical eye on this store. If something changes, even that sign gets ripped off that says we're closing or whatever, the equipment starts to get carted out, right? I, I think Robin's going to, she's not just going to hang up and go back to watching cartoons. 
She's on a tear. Right. She's going to find out what's what. And perhaps selling the F&E, the furnishings and equipment in most businesses, that breaks the lease. You can't have Starbucks uh-huh. decide to sell their coffee machine and just continue their lease. So okay. we're going to see something happening prior to. You know what? Oh, fantastic. Do 30 days. Let's call her in a month. Okay. Uh, look, my mind is rampant, but I, I think it's a better idea to call her in a month and just, just to say, hey, how's the sale going? Is the equipment gone yet? And we can't rely on her to reach out. I'm going to send her the email as soon as we hang up. But beyond that, let's, let's set the calendar for 30 and then set it again for October-ish because we know that lease will be. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of axes swinging here. There's a lot going on. But number one, made a good connection. That's human contact. And she says, you know, I want this guy in this, in this place. Yep. I, I like it. You. All right. Goodbye. Perfect. All right. Bye. Thanks, dude. You know what? I've dug ditches. And every day when you're digging ditches, you're tired. Your head hits the pillow and you're out. This, what I do, it's not the same. But in many ways it is. When you're turned on, when you're switched on all day and you're doing what is very, very important work for people, I'm not complaining. I love it. I don't know any other way. It's draining and satisfying at the same time. I don't want to call numbers and leave messages. I want to get folks like Robin on the phone and have a good, meaningful conversation and start to plant those seeds. You want shade? Don't plant a seed. Go spend $30,000 and buy a tree. What we do here at Free Laundromat is we plant seeds. Don't be in a hurry. This is a marathon. It is rarely a sprint. Josh knows that. If you're new and you're here because you just like to see Danny do funny faces, thank you. Thank you. I can't help myself. But if you're here because you want to own laundromats and change something, whether you're in Tennessee, L.A., New York, or the 38 other countries now where I have success stories, Guam, Puerto Rico, Poland, Florida, that's another country. Get the course. If you don't have the course, oh, I'm clicking off. I'm not here to sell you anything. Watch all 740 of my videos on YouTube. Watch them all. You know the conclusion you'll come to? I got to get this stupid course. It's guaranteed, 100%. No questions asked. 16 years, no one's ever returned it. No one's after, you don't need to return anything. No one's ever, ever asked for their money back. How's that possible? It's that good. There's that much information. I don't know what you're capable of. Do you? If I provide you the tools to go out and change your life, will you? I'm not telling you that I'm a mentor. I'm not telling you to jump in and spend a bunch of money so I can call landlords. If you want that, good. I'm available. Just me. I don't have a team of geeks in the back room that make these calls. I make the calls because that's what you want. That may change someday, but not for the foreseeable future. It's me. I got to get on the phone. I got to do more of this for more people. See ya.